All right, looks like it's time. Let's go. All right. Hello. I have lots of different sets of dice to uh, do today. Uh, okay, I have like three sets of dice actually, so it's not a ridiculous number of sets. Uh, but I have lots of other little things that I'm going to be working on here too. I'll get this away. I've got everything laid out, so I don't think I need my my to-do list. Um, but I'll go through what we're going to work on. Um, I spent Monday finishing these up so that they could be ready to be poured. Um, and these are some little graveyard dice. Let's see if I can make it so you can see. Kind of hard to see it. That little tiny graveyard dice. Got a little bit of purple there around the, the headstone. Um, and these all have the same, like, grass and a gravestone and uh, a little bit of, like, a floral around the... Kind of hard to show. Just the difference in, in light levels makes it hard to show. But all of them are like that, uh, including the D2. Here, the D2 is probably easiest to show. There we go. You can see the see the D2 there with our little our little mound of, of earth and the headstone and a little bit of purple flower in there. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna do maybe a little bit of like a, a kind of a white mist, like it's a, kind of a foggy night almost. But I haven't I haven't decided. I don't want to make it so that like it's hard to see. That is my concern with that, is that it'll make it hard to see. But I do think that it might look cool if I do it subtle enough. It's just doing it subtle enough that's the hard part. <laughs> Hi, Jen! How you doing? <laughs> like a clown with horns beeping? Ah, uh, alas, you were the first person here! Preemptively. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, wow! That's 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 really good timing right there, cause uh, uh, Omar had not uh, even said anything in the chat. Um, okay, so yeah, graveyard dice. We're gonna do those, uh, and those are only gonna take about half, cause you know they're. You saw the viewer count go up, and you knew. That's fair. I feel like it can be assumed that it's uh, one of you guys. Yeah, man, it just. But yeah, graveyard dice. They're already made, but we're going to pour them. Um, so those, I made these. I don't know, we're going to, we'll see how these turn out. Uh, ah, now you paint a grasshopper. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Hallmark, you need. Um, not this again, not this again. It's black tea, and I'm, I'm almost out. I've been sitting down here for a little bit, just kind of putting everything together, and I've been slowly drinking my tea. Um, so these, this, I made some blank inserts. I made some blank inserts. And the idea was to make them look like little uh, lanterns. It's kind of, the problem is that it, they look almost dark when I put, have a background there. But the idea was to make them look like little lanterns. They have like a little hold on top. I worry that, I don't know if they're going to translate, but I think they're going to end up looking somewhat different when I put them into the dice, because these are matte at the moment, so you can't really see the shine of all of the colors in there. Like, the colors aren't quite as bold as they will be, I think. So I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that uh, the little, little lantern dice will look more like lanterns once, uh, once they're actually... Once they're actually in their dice. Is the resin going to look like a lit lantern? That's the idea. Because um, I put... There's a bunch of like orange and yellow. There's some orange and yellow and some kind of smoke color in there and a little bit of glow in the dark. It's just kind of hard to see. I was debating adding a little bit of gold shimmer to the resin that I put into the molds on the outside of those. Or something like that, maybe inking them in, in yellow. Um, 
But I guess I'm, I'm just worried about them being a little bit too dark. I'm not quite sure. They might be fine once I once I put them into the uh, actual dice, because I think that'll make the, the colors a little bit bolder. Once you can actually see there. Oh, thank you, Paraperg. Oh, you just start, got started trying to make dice? Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, oh well, thanks for following. Glad you could come join us. Um, yeah, I'm getting... <laughs> well, it wasn't... Yeah, it just wasn't focusing. But, uh, yeah, without the background, you can... You can kind of see the yellow and the orange in there. We'll see. I guess we'll see. I'll take photos tomorrow and put them on the Discord. Um, so we have the graveyard dice that we're going to do. We're going to have the lantern dice that we're going to do. Set those here as well. Those are not on the correct things. They just ended up like that. Um, I have some uh, different molds. Do you have any experience dealing with floating faces on cap style molds? Oh, where they're like raised a bit? Where the, the, the lids kind of come off a little bit? Um, not too much. Every once in a while I do. Um, that's part of the reason. So I, I put my molds in the pressure pot on this lid right here. Um, if I have one where the lid seems like it's up a little bit too far, I'll sometimes stack another mold on top of it to help. I've heard of people flipping theirs upside down to help with that. Um, I tried that, it didn't really work for me, but you know, I've heard of people doing that. Um, yeah, the getting, oh, that's true. You might be overfilling your molds or you can use weights to keep the caps in place. Um, I did also, I have started trying to kind of taper my keys so that I can make sure that they're in the right spot and they're not like stuck up somehow. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't run into that issue too much, but, uh, uh, not name brand Omar might, might be right. Might be just a little bit too much resin. Don't know. I feel like there's lots of different things that it could be, that could be causing that, that it's just like, I don't know which one it is. Um, okay, so we've got, we've got our graveyard dice, we've got our lantern dice. Stack a mold on top to weigh it down, but that doesn't seem to help. Maybe overfilling, but all the very few people online show close-ups about their amounts. Well, I'll show, I'll, if you stick around, I'll, I'll show you how much I put in. I tend to, like, overfill mine quite a bit, so I don't know if it's that. Um, but I'll show you how much I put in when I, when I, uh, pour my resin later. Um, okay, so lots of little things. Um, I got, oh, I was like, Jen, what are you, what are you sending links up? But right, you're drawing a grasshopper. Um, I got these molds. Oh, those are really good little grasshopper. That's cute. I like the eyes. They remind me of, like, googly eyes. Um... I got these doll eye molds. Just, uh, these are just some, the eyes are not gonna stay that way. Well, they amuse me for now. I got these doll eye molds. Um, I can't remember if I've talked about this or not. It was kind of funny, in the span of like a week. That's true, I did do that to figure out how much I needed, but I still, I still tend to overfill my, my molds a little bit. Um, but it, within the span of like a week, week and a half, something like that. Um, I had someone reach out to me about making some eyes for like a prototype plushie that they're trying to make with another friend of theirs. And then also my cousin talked to me about doll customization, cause she's been doing that. I was like, you should make resin eyes. So it was just like, well, this is a sign that I need to make, I need molds to make uh, resin eyes. Um, and so we're gonna try and make the base part today. So that's going to be like the whites of the eyes, except I'm going to be doing a slightly different color. Um, and for that plushie, we were hoping to have some sort of like back to it that you can attach. I found these, which were actually like um, stuffed animal eyes, but I couldn't find any that were white and flat. And so I just got black ones and then painted them white. So we'll see how that goes. I have the, uh, the wire here so that hopefully they will stay upright. But those are actually going to hopefully be like a fluorescent glow-in-the-dark green. So we're going to mix that and some glow-in-the-dark 
pigment and maybe a little bit of white to make it opaque. Um, but we're going to be doing that in a couple of different sizes. And then I will, I will paint the, the iris and then we will fill that with resin, again with just clear resin, to hopefully make a nice uh, cohesive eye. Uh, got just a, a keychain that I need to finish up with just some white. Um, I have another set of dice to make. I think I think I want to do like some sunshiny colors, so like some some orange and some yellow. I don't have a ton of of dice in that those colors. I think so. I was thinking of doing I was thinking of doing like a petri, but maybe like a mixed petri and like mica drip type thing. So um, here, let me find an example for you. Um, so this chunky D20 right here, um, this has white ink in it, which dri drips to the bottom, drips to the bottom. And then I also did a shimmery black mica, which kind of sank to the bottom as well. So I'm thinking of doing something kind of like this, but maybe in oranges and yellows, purple. <laughs> You always want the purple. Purple's always a good color too. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking, I was thinking some sunshiny colors. Maybe we'll do some purple at some point. Hmm, I have an idea. We might be able to do something purple. I have an idea. Um, because we've got a couple more things we're making too. Since I'm, since I'm doing these sets that already have are halfway full with you know, a uh, little little graveyard or uh, I have the lanterns here um, I'm doing oh yes yes purple to be fair, those aren't those aren't as bad it's uh, it's this purple that's bad because it's white oh that one's actually empty um, but I think I think maybe uh, doing some yellows I'm gonna dump out my paint chips Sinking some yellows and some oranges together might be nice. Let me pull out some orange and yellow options. I haven't really decided what colors exactly I want to do um, and what all I want to do with them because it might be nice to do some sort of like glitter. Like, you know, I have like this yellow, it almost looks white on screen, but this yellow shimmery glitter. I could do iridescent flakes. I could do gold foil. I feel like there's there's options here to go with the orange and the yellow. And then let's see here. So that's the, that yellow and where's this? this is the orange. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think I want that yellow glitter. I don't know that that matches. Hmm. You know, if I'm going for something that's kind of metallic orange yellow, yeah, like, do you mean like gold when you say metallic orange yellow, or do you mean like a, a shimmery yellow orange? Because I feel like there's orange yellow and then there's gold, because they're like shimmery. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking kind of like a shimmery orange and, and yellow. But it might be fun to do some like... I'm trying to think of what I want to put with it. I think maybe some iridescent flakes with that might be pretty. If I'm going for kind of a sunshiny sort of uh, set. I think the orange yellow will be good. And then maybe I'll do that with like both the yellow, the orange, and some white. So we'll do kind of like a, a petri with the yellow, the orange, and the white. And then we will drip the um, orange yellow on top of that. And it'll kind of mix with those and end up all shimmery and stuff. I think I like that idea. I think that's what we're going to do for this set. Um, I guess this set's also kind of orange and yellow now that I'm thinking about it. But oh well, that's fine. We need more orange and yellow. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that. Let me grab the shimmery, shimmery color. Um, that's orange-red. We want orange-yellow. Let me, okay, 
Well, let me let me set these off to the side. Set those here. I think not to the gold foil, but we are gonna do we're gonna do some of the iridescent flakes because they're pretty, and I like things that are pretty. Ah, don't like dropping everything though. Um, okay, last couple of things that I'm gonna do. <laughs> you don't even want to change the googly eyes on the grasshopper you're drawing. I mean, I don't blame you. The googly eyes are amusing. Um. So I made, I got these multi-chrome pigments recently. Um, so depending on the angle they're at, they're a different color. I feel like this is, see how it's purple, you see how it's purple? Oof, she doesn't want to, see how it's purple? See how it's yellow? It's a, it's a different color depending on the angle it's at. Um, and so I went and, yeah, this one's like blue to pink. Okay. Um, I went and made some uh, keycaps recently with all of these different colors just to see how they look. Um, and I've done it with all of them except for this one. So I'm going to dust one of the keycap molds with this so I can have one of each of the different multichromes just kind of as examples. Um, but then I do have three more keycap molds. Let me put these away. I don't think we need these. I'm very sorry if this is loud. these three keycaps and I think a chunky d20 um, I want to do something floral I want to do something with some like flowers or moss or just some sort of uh, flora uh, in it um, I haven't really decided what yet let me pull down let me pull down some some options here um, I do have lots of little tiny plants Use. I really should just combine all these. I keep like pulling out little tiny plants um, to put into various things and then I end up with little containers of little plants. Um, but for like, let's start with the keycaps. Um, the keycaps, like I could do, I could do some little tiny flowers. I could I wonder if I could do a rose in one. It might be too thick. I don't know. But I could do something like, you know, these these kind of pretty leaves. And there's some, we could do some various leaves in one. Um, or some moss. Or I have like some, some yellow flowers that I pressed. It's just some pressed yellow flowers. A bouquet chalk. I was thinking about like trying to shove every flower imaginable in this chunk. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to organize it too much, but I was thinking of trying to do like a lot of flowers in here. If that's, uh, if that's kind of what you're thinking. I was thinking about putting, you know, roses and like everything I could in here. Like there's a um, grape hyacinth that's been pressed. Yeah, that was that was my idea. Um, actually, I'm gonna set, start setting some stuff over there that I think would look pretty. I don't know if that's exactly what you were saying, but you know, it's like mm, I kind of I kind of want to do something like that. And we can do some slightly larger flowers there, which is nice. Um, but for the keycaps, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Um, I do have some other flowers as well. Um, I just pulled these out because they were kind of smaller. Um, let, me, let me pull out some other flowers as well. Um, I've got flowers in all sorts of different containers. Because I have these that I uh, pressed myself, or dried myself, um, right here. Oh, you, oh, do I want to go, oh, that's true, yeah, yeah, if you have more dice questions and stuff, feel free to come join the Discord, um, I'm always happy to chat dice or other arts and crafts, D&D, &D. mostly it's people, uh, chatting arts and crafts and D&D, &D. 
I'm gonna move these over so I can actually open this up. I just had an idea for the chonk. I'm not, how crazy do we wanna go? Because the chonk is big enough that I can fill it with flowers. And also fit a moth in there. I could also fit a moth in there. And that might look really cool. Hmm. That might be cool if I could like fill it with like flowers and then like have the moth kind of on top maybe almost. Um I know. I should I should maybe change my my Twitch profile picture so maybe a little too intense. I wish it didn't show up quite like that when uh when I link it. Um But yeah, I've got I've only got a couple of uh a couple of moths. And this is you like it. Come hang out with how uh, come come hang out with me or else. Um Hmm. I kind of want to use this moth. I am also like, if it doesn't turn out, I'm gonna be very sad because it's such a pretty little, pretty little moth. But it would make a cool D20. Do I, or do I want to try and do a full set of jumbo dice? And that wouldn't be Mr. T intense. I mean, I pity the fool. Um. Hmm. Oh. But hmm, do I want to do a try and do a full set of jumbo dice that are full of flowers and have this moth and like the D20, or do I want to just do a D20 that's full of flowers with this moth? Mm. I'm trying to get you guys to either talk me into or out of it. I think we're gonna try and do we're gonna try and do it like a bouquet sort of uh, D, j jumbo D20 with a moth in it. We'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, hmm, yeah. I'm hope- I just hope everything turns out. I'm just gonna start setting a bunch of flowers and stuff off to the side that I think are pretty colors. I'm ready to go. have a few- I have a few things that I didn't actually press in here. I'm pretty sure I didn't press this one. I think I got this one already pressed. Um, we're gonna kind of line you zoned out. Oh, uh, I think I was debate. I was debating whether I wanted to try and do a full set of floral jumbo dice with a moth in the D20, or just do a jumbo D20 with the moth and the flowers in it. I guess I can. I'll I'll do the D20 with the moth and the flowers in it, and if I really like it, I can always make more dice to go with it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out flowers to that have nice bright colors that uh, will help fill up the. Um, Fill up the, the D20. I have substantial sizes too. Lots of yellow, lots of purple. Um, yeah, maybe we could do some kind of reddish leaf. I just want lots of color, I think. Lots of color. You're, you're about to say that exactly. It's like, ah, I can always make more later. Um. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to decide on which flowers, and I have another thing of flowers that I'm going to pull down in a moment, too, uh, that would also be good. I have these roses here. These are roses from my yard. Um, oh, hi, Fitz. Fitz is right outside my window. Um, so I have these right here that are kind of purple and stuff. Um, those, and I have... Not this one, just a second. Like this one is like kind of yellow, yellow and red. Um, I have some that are like more full looking, I guess, that are uh, like red and pink. Just debating. Maybe I'll, let me look at the red and pink ones. And we'll maybe, we'll maybe add those. Um, Cause I have more of them. So if I ever want to specifically do something with the purplish ones, I have them still. Um, let's see here. What else do I got? Oh, I've got some some big ol' uh, dandelion fluffs. 
Come on. Got a little, little fluffy. So big old dandelion fluffs. I'll put one of those over there. Um, I think we are gonna want some smaller things, uh, like some smaller leaves and such. I'm just gonna pull some out that I can use as smaller pieces if I need to. But I, uh, yeah, I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna set this up because I want the. I want the moth to be on top, so I think I'm going to try and have all of the flowers kind of jam-packed in there. And then I'm going to, I might end up like kind of gluing the moth to some of the flowers. Hmm, how do I want to do this, guys? Hmm. Um, I'm just, I'm just thinking about, yeah, I think I'm going to have to put everything into the mold one piece at a time, because otherwise... Uh, the opening is small enough at the top that it would be I would I'd crush everything as I tried to put it in. So I, I'm gonna have to kind of put everything in a little bit at a time. Um, let's see if we can grab I'm grabbing some bigger leaves and stuff though. Um, just to kind of because I can fit them in the jumbo D20. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be a bit of a, a project for tonight, getting everything in there. I think that's going to be our biggest project for tonight, is fitting everything into that Jumbo D20. Alright, let me, let me grab down the next thing of flowers, because I have a different thing of flowers that are ones that I bought. Because um, I needed some red roses at one point. So I got a thing of... I think of dried flowers at one point, um, and some of these have some some good color to them. Ooh, ow, if I don't catch my catch my leg there. Um, so, like these orange ones might be good. Some purple, and then I got some some roses here. There's the all sorts of good color here actually. There's the here's the pink ones. All right. So let's see what we got here. I still haven't decided what I want to do for the keycaps yet, though. I do want to do florals, but I'm not sure what. Oh, you know, I might be able to fit these some of these little tiny roses. Mm, I could do some little keycaps that have like little tiny rosebuds and like gold foil in them. That look nice and classy. I bet it would look classy. Oh, these smell nice. Um. Like that, and that could be an option. Uh, these are small enough. Let's see. Let me see if these are small enough um, to. I, don't, I just broke that, didn't I? I broke the seal on that. Let me see if one of these is small enough, like that it won't get in the way. My only concern is that it's going to be too tall. My material storage. I mean, you. Uh, you don't see the mess that is the table next to me, because uh, like the table next to me is a mess. But uh, it is. I I set it up at one point just because I was tired of not being able. Yeah, so that's too tall. I was tired of not being able to reach everything because I wasn't putting things away. Because it was just like oh, I have to like get up and go put them over there, which isn't that far, but it, it was that far. Um, we could do this though. We could do a yellow flower because that's flat. Um, <clears throat> let me pull out a couple of these for the bouquet one though. A couple of smaller rosebuds might be nice for that. Um, hibiscus tea dice. That yeah. I don't know if I have any hibiscus in here, but I do know that I have some hibiscus leaves upstairs because we've made hibiscus tea. <laughs> before. My brother and I at one point got just plain black tea and a whole bunch of different spice, like edible florals and spices and stuff, you know, mint and hibiscus and all sorts of things and tried making our own tea blends. It was fun. It was fun. So I still have a bunch of that stuff too. All right, let's grab one of these purpley ones. Sure, I'm going to grab a big one. 
I don't, I'm grabbing a whole bunch of flowers out. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all of these flowers, to be honest. Um, but then at least I have the options. Let's grab one of these orange ones. Yeah, that's a nice one. Hibiscus water is your literal favorite. It's kind of, man. Yay, flowers. Hey, how are you doing? Long time no see. Ah, they're all stuck together. Yes, I, uh, I was just like, man, I do really want to, I, I really like working with florals. I'm like, I should do something with florals. Um, let's grab one of those. The ones I'm grabbing out at the moment are going to be for a giant D20. Uh, I'm still deciding what kind of florals I want to do for keycaps. I haven't decided that yet. Um, I could do a whole bunch of different moss. Um, I could do some leaves. Just don't know. I really don't like how these smell. Uh, this is the carnation. I don't know, they just smell... They smell like fruit, really old fruit. That's that's how I describe it. It's like kind of fermenting fruit, which is not like bad. It's just kind of such a, a sickly sweet, but kind of off scent. Okay, I've already got one of these, so I don't need that. Um, all right, so yeah, I haven't decided on the keycaps. Um, I could do, like, like I said, I have leaves, I have moss, um, we could do some little pressed flowers, like that would fit in there, that little, this little yellow flower, you know, that would, that would fit in there just perfectly. Um, we could do that, maybe backed by a whole bunch of moss or something like that, that might be kind of cool. Um... I guess I'm just, I have not decided. I'm trying to think of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Back by moss, maybe? Okay, so we'll try one. We'll try one with that, backed by moss. Um, I'm trying to think of composition, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm trying to figure, think of how I want these to be kind of composed in here. Um, that's, hmm, this might end up with a little bit of sparkle. It looks like it has a little bit of sparkle left from when I did the uh, the multi-chrome. That's okay though. It looks like it has a little bit of kind of a blue sparkle to it. I think it'll look nice. Alright, so I think we're going to end up adding the backed by Moss sounds like an up and coming startup that's financially backed by a bigger corporation. We've been backed my, by Moss. Yes. So it'll be It'll be like that, oops, it'll be like that in there, and then we'll do a backing of some various, some various mosses. Uh, I'm going to take this out for now, because I think we want to add that after we've added a little bit of resin, just so that we don't end up with it too close to the surface. Um, so we'll do that. I'm going to grab my moss out of here. Ah! Those are some, some various mosses. Um, and then I've got two more here, and I, um, I think I could do, so I, the roses were just a, this is, it's real, you can get artificial moss, I'm, it's possible it's been dyed, I'm not sure, but it is, it is reindeer moss, um, it's stuff that I got from, it is stuff I got from a craft store, I didn't pick this stuff myself, not a lot of moss around here. Um, it's not that damp, um, but it is, it is very planty. Um, oh, what I was saying though is I, so I can't fit a full rose in one of these. It's not deep enough. Um, uh, maybe I'll get a different kind of keycap at some point that's a little bit taller. I think it's more in there. Um, but I think I could fit some rose petals and maybe some rose petals and some gold foil would be classy. So that might be kind of cool. Do a, just a few rose petals and some uh, some gold foil. We'll just pull out a little cup here and put some 
some rose petals in here. It really does not, isn't going to take a lot. So there's really not a lot of room in here. Eh. Yeah, that should be plenty of that. I do like the scent of dried roses, though. Those, those smell good. So we'll do that, I think, with some gold foil. So I pull the gold foil down before I forget, because if I don't pull it down, I will forget. Um, all right, this one, I'm going to have moss in there, too. I'm trying to set things where I can get to them easy, and then I don't forget that they exist, because they're no longer in my vision. Um, and then I have one more. What do I want to put in this one? Um, that's a pretty purple. How long does a keyboard key take to uh, take to cure? Uh, just so uh, 24 hours until I can take it out of the mold, and then about 48 hours until it's fully cured. Um, that's just the resin I use. Um, you know, it varies from resin to resin, but the resin that I use, 24 hours until it's hard enough for me to unmold it, and 48 before it's it's hard enough for me to sand it. Um, hmm. It might be cool to do some sort of, like, little leaves. What if I do, like, a little tiny leaf? That might be cute. I think this little leaf would be cute. Should we just do a leaf and then do like maybe um, some sort of, of resin behind it, some sort of colored resin behind it? That might be kind of cute. I think we'll do that. So we're gonna do, I just have a single leaf, just a single leaf in there. Uh, and then I'm going to do some clear resin with that and then we'll do something, I don't know if we wanna do like a pea tree or maybe I will do uh, some clear resin and then pour in some sort of colored resin and it'll displace a little bit, but you'll still be able to see the, the leaf. But I think we're gonna do something like that. A single leaf. Yes. All right, let's, uh, let's start putting our stuff together now. Well, let me put everything away first so I don't stick my elbow in all of the plants. Oh yeah, we'll pull this down for these. So, I think the thing that's going to take the most time is going to be that D20, the Jumbo D20. So let's do this first. Um, like I was saying, I got these multi-chrome powders recently, and I've made a keycap of each one. Uh, and so I haven't done this one yet. This is the last one. And I just want, you know, I want one of each as kind of an example. Just see how they look. Um, so I'm going to dust the mold here with this last multi-chrome. And I'll, it's, ah, oh man, they just look so pretty because they, I don't know, the, the, the keycaps, I think, work really well for the multi-chrome uh, pigments because they're not flat, they're curved, so you get to see all of the different colors in them. Um, like, the, the, the differences in color really show up because of the, the curved surfaces on the, on the keycaps. It just, I don't know, it's nice. So we'll, we'll do this and then we'll move on to trying to get that jumbo d20 all figured out. That one's that one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, I think. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get that jumbo d20. Because we're gonna put all of those plants in there and get them all to stay. That's gonna be the hard part is getting them to stay. I might need to uh, pull out the UV resin or something to kind of attach some things together. I don't know. I might be able to just get everything to stay by wedging things in there a little bit. Yeah, my two concerns for that are things staying where I want them to and not getting a whole bunch of air bubbles trapped in there. Because that's the thing with the, when you use like really uneven inclusions and plants and stuff like that, is that air bubbles will get trapped underneath and won't have anywhere to go. Um, which is just kind of meh. Your friend's wife is making spooky bath bombs. Ooh, that's fun. Are they uh, selling them or are they just making them? Because if they're selling them, you should send me a link because both of those things sound right up my alley. <laughs> I 
man, I am, I love selling. Oh, cool. Yeah. You should send a link like in the Discord maybe. Or you can just send it to me. But I want to see the spooky bath bombs. I like both of those things. I think this is pretty good. Let me just grab a little bit more. Make sure it's all completely coated. And I'll kind of, I'll see if I can show you how the colors look in here. It's always a little bit. You will make it secret. Uh, let me, I'm just going to clean off my brush by doing that. That doesn't hurt anything. Um, so it's always kind of hard to show off the inside here. Oh, man. Mm, you can kind of see the blue there. It's like it's always hard because the light's never at the right angle. Yeah, you can kind of see the pink of the wall there. Yeah, it's kind of like blue to pink. Um, so we're gonna just gonna back that with some some black resin. All right, moving on to the jumbo D20. This is gonna be the hard one. Um, let me just. Grab all my things, that's the moth. I'm just gonna start setting out all my plant options here. Um, so I'm gonna, I think, try and get like a mix of different colors and sh textures and shapes and stuff next to each other in there. And then I want the moth to be at the very top, um, which works out because it's my D20 here mold, the highest numbers at the top. So that will be easy to find. I'm just going to move everything over so we can see them all. See what all the options are. See what all the colors are that I have available to me. I am going for like all as many colors as I can. Because I want it to be kind of just like a mix of things. A whole, uh, a whole garden. A whole garden of things. Alright. So I have mostly like some purples. I have well, I have green. I have purple. Um, I have kind of like some some pinkish purple. And I have yellow, and I have a little bit of red. So I think that'll be just fine. So that's that's the plants I pulled out. Um, I might throw some moss in there as well and that sort of stuff. Um, but let's see here. I want to. I don't think I'm gonna make it so, hmm. Here's, here's, here's what I'm trying to decide. Do I wanna make it so that it looks like the plants are growing up from the bottom? Or do I want to have just kind of like plants growing out from the center? Um, or just kind of like layered in there? I'm tempted to do kind of just like layered in there so it kind of is like the plants are, are growing everyone which direction and then fill it up most of the way with the plants and then have the um, the moth like sitting on top. I think I'm going to kind of do that. So I'm going to start putting these in. Normally with florals, I like to get them kind of with all sorts of resin on them before I put them in the molds. But we're going to be adding so many florals here that that's going to be difficult to do. So we're just, I'm just going to start adding the florals. Uh, and I want to get all sorts of different colors and textures in there. So let's just start and start uh, yeah I've just lost a whole bunch of that but that's fine that's fine I want to kind of spread out the different colors and things all right I've got a couple of slightly larger things let's put a rose in there Oh yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have plenty here. It's gonna be plenty. I think this might be pretty. I'm just I am worried. I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna pour this one first, which maybe isn't a great idea because it's the one that I need the least, I suppose. But um, I really need the the resin to sink, and it's going to take some time for it to sink. 
um, in here because oh boy there's so much there's so many places for the air to get trapped in this let's push that down let's see if I can put this in um, not great the uh, the d20 really is the hardest for me to see into um, d6s are probably the easiest um, do I have D6 somewhere here? Yeah, so D6s, since the opening is the same size as the rest of the die, you can see exactly all the way down into the die. Um, but D20s, I feel like they have the smallest opening to the size of the die ratio. And so they're kind of hard to see into. Um, it's even harder for me to show you. I can see in there better than you can, just because the camera doesn't do well with the difference in light. Like the human eye, my human eye at least can see the in there, um, the different even with the difference of light between it, easier than the camera can. Um, but it's not it's not great. Um, I think maybe it's a little bit easier with this jumbo D20 as opposed to. Um, as opposed to like the regular D20 because like this does have a slightly larger opening so even though it's the same ratio wise I do at least have a larger area that I can look through um, but yeah still not still not the easiest um, what do I want to add next that's the real question I'll add a little bit of the carnation over here next to the purple I think And I think maybe I should add a little bit of green. Let's add, add a couple of leaves, just plain old leaves. Try and add some kind of neutral, neutral in there. Um, not that green's necessarily neutral, but in this context it kind of is. Kind of neutral. All right, here. Trying to... I'm trying to kind of line the outside of the mold with things so that I'm and I'm kind of trying to leave a little bit of an open space in the middle here so that I can put that moth in there and I'm thinking I'm going to end up dabbing a little bit of glue to the bottom of that moth before I place it in um, just so that because these are all wedged in here pretty well the flowers are um, but I worry that that moth will float because um, that's that's a thing that florals and and bugs and stuff like to do is they like to try and float um, if they aren't wedged in. So I think the moth is going to be not wedged in as much as the rest of these flowers. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, glue it down a little bit just, uh, just so that I can make sure. Um, let's see here. There's some little, little tiny buds of something, some sort of plant that I, Pick from my yard. Um, okay, I need some more. I think maybe. Ah, I think this will look really nice on top of this rose. So we're gonna put this rose kind of in here, facing up. And I think we're gonna end up putting the moth kind of half on there. I think that'll look nice. I think there's there's a lot of contrast. Um, that's what I need is some contrast. Mm, hopefully that's not too tall. And I think I need just a little bit more off to the side here. Because I am kind of trying to, like I said, bring it up on the sides. So that it's kind of like a bowl. It's kind of a bowl that everything's sitting in. There's a flower petal. Uh, and I've got some little tiny leaves here, we'll add those as well. Uh, um, uh, uh, Dancing Corgi, are you okay with me using your actual name? 
before I just call you your actual name? Just want to check before I do it. Okay. Uh, so what have you been up to, Bonnie? <laughs> um, it's been a long time since we've actually seen each other. Ah. I'm just gonna throw some random little bits in, I think. Um, Um, yeah, I think that's good. Working in remodel construction, doing lots of gardening and crafts and free time. Oh, awesome! What sort of crafts have you been doing? I, gardening is nice too, I know nothing about it. Please don't look at my yard. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm always, I'm always curious to see what, uh, arts and crafts people are doing. Bookbinding and leatherworking. Ooh, cool. That's one of those ones where it's just like, I've wanted to get into it, and I just have never made the time. So that's really cool. Which are gonna, yeah, that's a good point. You've been, you've been making all sorts of uh, fancy books. All right, I think, let me see if the moth will fit in here. I might, need, not, might not even need to glue it down because it's so close to the top. I um, I was looking at paper making at one point too, because I thought that sounded really cool. Mm. Is it gonna go down? Oh, it kind of hits the top, which I don't want. Ooh, oh, it's close. Trying to make it so the wing is very, very close to the top at the moment. I don't want to. There we go. Hmm. I'm just wondering if this is too close to the top. It's kind of sticking out a little bit. Okay. Well, I got it out. Without losing too many legs. If I can get this to go down a little bit, I think it'll fit a little bit better. We're gonna break that rose a little bit, which is fine because you shouldn't be able to see it too much anyways. I just want this to fit in here and I might put it this direction instead. Oh, there we go. I think that's gonna be nice. Also, you play lots of D and D, so I was interested in dice. Oh, thanks! Thanks for showing off my page. Um, oh man, just yeah, let me. I don't want to crush this, but I want it to actually go down enough. It's not. There we go. It's kind of up a little bit. I think maybe. Can I open the wings a little bit? Hope they don't break it too much. I'm trying to open the wings just a little bit so that they're a little bit flatter. And therefore a little bit further down. Man, it's so hard. They're so delicate. I'm trying not to break it. I think it is, <laughs> it is flower dice, but I do also have a moth that I'm I am trying to put in here as well. And I'm trying to make it so that I'm trying to make it so that it's visible and not I don't I'm trying to make it so it's not sticking out. So I don't want it to um, get caught. Oh there we go. That might be better. Yeah, just a second here. I'm trying not to, to... I think it has lost all of its legs, but that's okay. Can't tell in the D20 anyways. Yeah, there we go. I think I just have this, had it kind of the wrong direction. Now I have it with like the face towards the top. Yeah, that fits so much better. 
I just need to kind of flip it around. Um, it might be kind of hard to see. I'm hoping that I don't end up with too much. Uh, let's see if we can make it so you can see. Never likes to focus. Hmm. Maybe it will focus. It never likes to focus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. Hello! I'm trying to get it to focus on this, uh, the moth in here. There we go. There you go. You can see the moth in there now. There's the moth. But yes, also, uh, welcome Blue Moon and welcome Bosun. How are you both doing? Moth! So, I'm hoping that we don't end up with too much, um, like too many air bubbles or anything in there. Like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna add the resin to this first, so that the resin has time to sink down in there. And then we'll probably have to add more. Um, but I think we're good to go there. Let me set all of these flowers off to the side somewhere here. Um, where is a thing to set them in? Well, I'm just going to set them on this tray with these other flowers for now. That's fine. <laughs> oh no, you might have COVID. Uh, sorry, I just saw everyone's, like, being sad at you and I wasn't sure why. It's like, why is everyone sad that Boston's here? And then I just actually read your thing. I hope not. That would suck. It's been a week. You're vaccinated. Oh, okay. I I have uh, heard of some folks that are vaccinating, vaccinated also getting COVID, but it's like not as bad. I've heard it still sucks, but it's not as bad uh, if you've been vaccinated. But hopefully, hopefully you don't have it. Hopefully just got a little bit of a cold or a flu or something, but that sucks. I hope you feel better. Um, okay, so we've got our Jumbo D20 ready to go. I think I've got everything pretty much figured out. I just need to um, get all of my mixing cups. Ah, oh, yeah, that that is one of the symptoms for sure. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. All right, so this one's gonna be some rose petals and a little bit of foil. All right, let me just, I'm just gonna start. How are the keycaps going? Uh, I mean, I'm, ha I'm having fun. I'm always having fun. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try some different ones. I'm gonna try doing some rose petals and some gold foil. Ooh, maybe you should do a little bit of is this the shimmer gold. That's the brilliant gold. Where's my sparkle gold? I do a little, let's do a little tiny bit of sparkle sparkle gold in there as well. Um, this is channel fun. Oops, I missed a plant. It blended in with my messy workspace. How did that happen? So just a little bit of gold sparkle. Literature keys can be fun. Hemingway or Dickinson keys could be nice. Hmm, what are, what are you uh, what are you thinking about like how to theme them? Are you thinking with like passageway like Passages from, passageways, passages from some of their books or like something based on one of their books. Um, okay, this one's going to be just a leaf with some clear resin and then passages or visual art. That could be cool. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to brush up on my literature. That one has a leaf. And then do I want to do white resin? Or do I want to do some sort of color? 
And if so, what color do I want to do with a leaf? Just kind of a neutralish, greenish leaf. Um, fall is coming up. It's true. What? Yeah, white would make it pop more. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, I could, yeah, I think maybe we'll just do white. I just worried that it'll be a little bit too boring. <laughs> I worry it would be boring, I guess. Tea dice. That's definitely one of the things that's just like, oh, I should make those at some point. I did try making tea dice recently, and I did not like how they turned out, but, uh, add sparkles. Oh, yeah, I can always add sparkles. Oh, we could do a shimmery white. I could do the leaf with like a shimmery white background. Um, black tea, green tea. Ooh, I also have this interference violet that's white, um, but then has like a purple shimmer to it. That might be pretty with the green. Why don't we do that? We're gonna do that. It's gonna look white and then it's gonna have a little bit of a shimmer to it so we'll do that um i just need to find a mixing cup that is clean enough for me to do that because i have so many mixing cups over here that are just uh full of resin still take a break and lay it down jen is your is your hand getting tired from drawing Black tea, add a translucent brown, amber, dirty pour. Oh, that that could be cool. To be fair, it's you went straight to drawing after work and you're feeling the effects. Oh gosh. Yeah, take a break. Run away with us for the summer. Let's go upstate. Um Yes, so let's do, we're going to do the Interference of Violet, because I think that'd be cool. Um, we're going to do White. <laughs> I got that reference. Um, we're going to do this probably mixed with a little bit of white um, alcohol ink, just to make it more opaque. But we'll do clear first, and then we'll put that on top, and it'll kind of swirl a little bit. I think that'll be cool. Um, oh, we can actually add that. I'm going to add that to the uh, mixing cup now. I don't know why I'm not. Yeah, like, like I didn't have uh, the entirety of Hamilton memorized at one point. We'll just, we'll just pretend. We'll just pretend that I didn't have that memorized at one point. It's all good. Uh, all right, there's that. Um, this one, we're going to do a yellow flower in there and then some different mosses. So let me just pull out, let me just pull out some chunks of moss, I think. You gotta sleep. Well, thanks for stopping by, Bosun. I'm glad you could come hang out for a little bit. Hope you have a good night. Feel better. Hope you feel better. Okay, a little bit of. We'll grab a little bit of this moss, too. There's a play sign, though. Man, I haven't been able to um, sing lately. I have, but I haven't. Um, that's so fun fact about me. I've said before that there's two things I feel like I'm good at. One of them is painting, and one of them is singing. Um, I haven't really been able to to sing all that much lately. I've been having like a weird thing with my throat. I don't know. I've just had like a real a sore throat a lot recently. Uh, and it kind of comes and goes. I don't know why, though. It's just strange. Um, that's gonna be... Ah. I just had... Oh, here it is. It's like I just had one that was... Had the, uh... The, um, the iridescent flakes in it. Where did it go? But how am I supposed to start a band if I, uh, can't sing? The only musical talent I have. 
if uh, if uh... <laughs> tomorrow your gay d20 arrives except it will all you already be away in a D&D game by the time it does and you think it's a cruel twist of fate yeah I actually went and looked at that um, today I was just like when are those actually supposed to arrive to, to folks it's just like ah tomorrow Yeah, I, I, I like how that one. I was debating doing something kind of similar like that for the D20 tonight, but then I was just like, florals. I like florals. I want to work with florals. So, we're, we're doing that, but I don't know. I've been enjoying just doing the single chonky D20s. Um, I think I'm going to do... So, my plan... Um, my plan is to make a whole bunch of sets of D6s on Saturday. Um, cause I have, if you look behind me, wait, wait, if you look behind me at this right here, this is all of the dice for like the next three dice releases or so. Um, and so I have been kind of organizing, organizing them that way. And I have pretty much all of the eight piece sets figured out for the next three months or so. Um, you know, plus, plus some for, for 2022. Um, and so I'm, I'm starting to figure out kind of what I can still use some more sets of, what colors and things I can use some more of. Um, I have fate dice kind of made, but I don't really have that many D6 sets made. And I don't necessarily sell a lot of D6 sets. I sell some, but um, not a ton of them. But I still try to have like one or two new sets of D6s out with each restock. So we're gonna make a whole bunch of D6 sets on Saturday. That's the plan. Um, and then I think Monday, so I make, I make dice with you guys usually about twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, but I usually make dice like three times a week-ish on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and then Mondays. Mondays I will also pour resin. Um, usually it's just like, I'll do, uh, you know, stuff that we've done before or, you know, just some, just go do some dirty pours. Nothing too interesting, just kind of chill, pour some resin on my own. Um, but I'm thinking maybe on Monday I'll try doing another full jumbo set. Um, I feel like the jumbo sets, a dirty pour, oh, a dirty pour is where you take all of your different colors and you put them in the same uh, cup together and then you pour that into the mold. Um, and it makes the colors swirl together a whole bunch. Um, depending on what kind of like materials and stuff you use, it can swirl slightly differently. Um, here, let's see here. Yeah, here. Um, so this, this, is a, um, this is a dirty pour with like some black and some purple, some gold. And so I had all of those colors in the same cup together, and then when I when I poured it in, they all kind of swirled together. So you get kind of different layers and stuff of the different colors. And then I think that that had this is this is also one right here. Um, although in this case, you can see kind of the fine lines there. Uh, you see kind of those fine lines there. That's because I dripped ink onto the top of the container before pour, pouring it in. Kind of this is like kind of the thinner lines. Um, I really, I really like doing them though. They're, they're just kind of fun to do, kind of simple, but can make really pretty things. Um, and just like, hmm, how much of this do I need? Probably more. It's always more than I think. Uh, so we're gonna do about 25 milliliters of this, and then about five of the orange. So, me. So each, each set of dice is about 30 milliliters of resin. That should be plenty. That should be plenty of iridescent flakes. I don't, should not need more than that. That seems like a lot. Um, anyways. Oh, uh, I was just going to say though, like, I don't usually do a set of jumbo dice on the stream except for the single d20s because a set of jumbo dice, a set of jumbo dice is a full mixing cup of resin, so it's the only thing that I do, usually. 
It's just a set of jumbo dice and then like maybe some individual d20s or something like that. Um, and I don't know, it just seems more interesting to do a bunch of little projects on stream. Um, okay, so here's the little lanterns. Um, so I, people have just joined. The idea here, these are little, little, just little lanterns. Um, I'm hoping that they turn out a little bit brighter once I actually get them into the resin part um, because they're kind of matte at the moment, so I think that's making them look, appear a little bit darker. Um, I'm debating if I want to add a little bit of, yeah, I think I might as well. I was debating adding a little bit of like the sparkle gold to the resin that I put around this so that it looks like it's kind of illuminated a little bit. I don't know, I don't know if that will help or not. I don't think it'll hurt anything, so we might as well. So let's just grab another mix of cup. Another mixing cup. Uh, maybe not that mixing cup. I'm trying to find one that had like gold in it previously. So if a little flake of it ends up in it, it's not a big deal. Ah, so this is a mixing cup that had like a. Actually, you know, I might use this mixing cup for my gold for my uh, orange. So the one that I just added the iridescent flakes to, that's also gonna have some orange mica powder that's gonna kind of fall down through it so i might actually use this for that i'll just grab a new one i'll just grab a new mixing cup for the uh the clear with the little bit of gold shimmer try not to drop everything so i'm gonna add some orange to that and that's gonna be about five millimeters if i can and actually let's use this one Uh, I need to, f hmm, how much resin is this going to be? It might be a little bit more than like five milliliters. I can't remember exactly how much resin it takes to fill in um, around the uh, blank inserts. don't remember exactly. Okay, so 10. And the, the D2 for this set is actually already done. It's, the D2 is a little bit different than the... Here, I can show you what the, the insides of these look like, actually. Because the insides of those are like this. So this is, this is what's on the inside of those, but on the outside. Come on, focus for me. Never likes to focus. Never likes to focus where I want it to focus. Let's try this again. There we go. So this is the, the what sort of stuff's on the inside of those little lanterns. And I think that shimmer and stuff's gonna show up a lot better once they're shiny and not matte. Um, that's my hope. Oh. I guess this one won't have that little bit of gold shimmer, but that's okay. That's okay. That's yeah, fine. All right. So I've got those. Okay, let me add our, our little bit of orange. So I was talking about this on Saturday, um, and I was wanting to get folks' opinion on if I were to change Saturday to like a game day instead of a uh, craft day. I'm not completely sold yet. I, like, I'm not sure. We're going to do about five milliliters. Let's see. I want this to be jam-packed full of, of pigment because I want it to sink. And this mica, it's mica so it's heavier than resin. So if I 
add a whole bunch of it to some resin that it'll make that resin heavier and it'll sink. I think that's probably enough. All right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I was just, I've been debating on making, making Saturday a, a game day instead of a, um, instead of a craft day. Uh, and so there's a couple, a couple reasons for it. And a couple reasons why I'm like, mm, I don't know. Um, but I'm trying to figure out with some friends at the moment, a time when we can like all play Minecraft together. And so one of the times that I said could work is on Saturday, but I would be streaming at the same time. Um, so, you know, Saturday would then kind of become the day of, would kind of become Minecraft day. Although I wouldn't always meet up with everybody probably. Um, we might end up doing some some resin stuff if I need to get stuff done. If I have a whole bunch of commissions or something. Or I might end up just doing some other game. Um, I do think it could be fun to do some sort of... Um, like... Uh, I don't think co-op's the right word, but multiplayer game. Um, like in the dis... Like, I'll hop on the Discord together and actually just play. Uh, while streaming on Saturday, one of the Saturdays. You know, I'm like, that could be, that could be fun. What was I grabbing this for? What was I grabbing this for? Oh, this. I was grabbing it for the white. Um, like, I'm, I'm baiting. I'm trying to decide also, like, if I don't end up changing Saturday to, like, a game day. Um, maybe trying to set up, like, doing games on Tuesday nights sometimes or something like that. Um, that's the only day where I can think of also having a little bit of free time is, is Tuesday nights. <clears throat> um, just like, oh, I might be, might be able to swing that. But, I don't know, I, I, I'm looking for, looking for some opinions, what folks think. Ah, uh, this one needs weight. I'm just gonna do that, because I want that to be nice and clean. And this one, I need glue cool in the dark. We'll do that with this. This is already kind of a lime greenish. And honestly, if there's a few flecks of the sparkly lime green, that's fine by me. It's kind of supposed to look like a little irradiated sort of thing. So maybe the little the little flecks of sparkly lime green I think will will fit in with that kind of odd uh, irradiated. Uh, Look. Oh, my nose it just. Ah. <clears throat> All right. So let's add some glue in the dark powder to this. Um, this one, man, this glue in the dark powder is so bright, but it also kind of sinks. I've noticed, so we're probably going to pour these maybe a little bit later on so that hopefully that glow in the dark powder will stay suspended. Also, this stuff makes a mess, I've found. Like, it always ends up around the lid and then it ends up everywhere. I don't think I'm going to need very much, so I'm doing those eyeballs. I don't think it's going to take. Ugh. Well, I guess we'll dust it off. Man, this the this glow in the dark powder gets everywhere. All right, um, we've got that, and then we're gonna add. Yeah, there's glow in the dark powder all over my table now. My my whole table is is now ready. To, no, um, we'll add this as well, and maybe a little bit of white to make it opaque. Uh, we need a little container for that. I think this contain this one had black in it, which is what I'm gonna put in it, so it works out perfectly. Yeah, I have so many, so many little mixing containers over here that are still full of, of random little bits of resin. Alright. I don't know, I I don't need to clean this one out too good. It had black in it before, I'm going to be adding black to it again. 
like an opaque black, so it's not gonna be, you won't be able to see any anything else. Okay. I think that is everything. I'm pretty sure I've got everything in my little mixing cups, which means that we are ready to pour some resin. If I am looking at everything correctly, and I think I am. I think I am, I think I am. Um, cool, so let me grab my, my protective equipment and uh, we'll, we'll pour some resin. So that consists of a couple of gloves and a respirator. So I'm gonna, ooh, it's not trip and fall. Um, I'm gonna be a little muffled for the rest of the stream. Just a heads up, I'm gonna sound like this. My, uh, my Darth Vader mask is going on. If I can, there we go, if I can find the latch. <coughs> I need to order new, um, uh, oh man, I've just blinked on what these are called. Uh, safety first. Yeah, exactly. Hmm, just a second. I'm debating whether I'm going to get, I'm probably going to be too cold. My hair is doing something funky here. I've just noticed my hair is doing something absolutely funky. Well, I guess we're just going to have funky hair for the rest of the stream. Um, I'm probably going to get cold with this off, but I'm going to get warm with it on. So I'm going to take that back off. All right. Okay, I'm going to mix some cup. Ooh. Let's mix some cup. I'm going to stir a stick. All right. So I'm going to be using a two-part resin. So there's a part A and a part B, um, which is a resin and a hardener. Let me grab those. And so, oh, I might need to order more again. Guys, I've been doing so much resin stuff. Can I just, yeah, two seconds. I just got a sticky spot on my chair, which is not good. I don't want a sticky spot on my chair. Okay, anyway, good. Um, all right, yeah, so uh, the kind of resin that I use, it's a uh, one to one, so one part A to one part B. And I am going to go quiet here for a second because I can't I can't measure and, and talk at the same time unless we want to mess, which I really don't. Um, not with this anyways. So I will be back in just a second. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves. There's 50 milliliters of the resin. And then we'll do 50 milliliters of the hardener. This usually takes a, takes a couple minutes to stir up completely because um, I do want to make sure it's stirred up absolutely completely, otherwise it won't cure properly. Um, but that's okie dokie. Um, man, I, my mind has just gone completely blank. I'm just, I'm just uh, over here like... Resin. Ooh, goopy. I'm starting to get tired, to be fair. I don't know. It's just it's one of those nights where I'm just like, eh, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go take a go take a a, a bath with a uh, some sort of spooky bath bomb. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
I am, I am excited about all of these things. I, I am excited to see how all of these things turn out when they're done. Um, some of them I've been working on for a while. The, um, the graveyard dice I've been kind of, I, like, I've had the idea for those for a while. And then they've been kind of sitting half done for quite a while. As I've just been like, hmm, I'll get around to the second half of those at some point. Don't know when, but some point. Um, so I'm finally getting around to the second half of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and interested to see how some of these turn out. I really hope that the graveyard dice turn out. And the lantern dice, I hope those turn out too, because I'm just not sure how they're going to turn out. I, like, I, I hope that they look bright, but I'm not, you know, 100% sure that they will. But I've put a bit of work into painting all of those, uh, so it's just like, man, I hope my time and effort pays off. But I'm not, I'm not 100% sure how they're going to look when they turn out. Same with these, this flower Jumbo D22 with the moth. Man, I hope that moth and everything looks good. I hope I don't end up, with, end up with too many air bubbles in there. That's the real concern. Is air bubbles. Yeah, so this is uh, this is still stirring. Um, let me see if I can show you. There's a whole bunch of streaks in it. So I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to see. But there's a whole bunch of like lines and striations in here. It's kind of hard to see on camera. Um, but but as I can stir it, you can you can kind of see where I just stirred. Like, it kind of leaves a trail where I just stirred it. Um, and that's where the two parts have not mixed together completely yet. There's uh, still part A and part B that are rubbing up next to each other. And they're diffracting... Diffracting? I, I think that's the right word. The light just slightly differently, so they... Uh, they You can kind of see where they're touching each other. And I don't want that because I want them to be mixed completely. So I'm just going to continue to sit here and mix, keep scraping the sides, make sure there's no, no resin stuck on the sides. And uh, get this thing all stirred up. And I think, I think this will go fairly quick from this point, we'll see. There's also little things to do, it's, it's definitely a lot quicker um, to make dice, if I'm doing like a whole bunch of the same kind of dice. Um, so I went and, and timed how long it, it takes to do certain steps of the dice making process. Because I was curious, you know, how long does it actually take me to make a set of dice? Because um, I hadn't actually measured it. Uh, and that was one of the things that originally convinced me to raise, raise my dice prices. But anyways, um, I was like, I, cause I, I'm a bad judge of time and how long it actually takes to do things. But so I went and actually timed, sat down and I made a, a set of galaxy dice or three sets of galaxy dice, and was like, okay, this took me uh, two hours, something like that. I think it was two hours um, to make three sets of galaxy dice, get all of the materials set up um, and pour them and get them in the pressure pot and all that. Um, and so I was like, okay, so it takes me 40, 40 minutes per set of dice. Um, but like when I was doing that, when I was, you know, figuring out how long it takes to make a set of dice, I tried to do the, do it in the most efficient way possible or as fast as I could, um, which isn't the way that I always work. Let's be real here. You know, I tend to do like a lot of one-off sets. So I'll do three different sets of dice at a time, which takes a lot more time than if I were to do three sets of galaxy dice all at the same time. But, you know, it's fun. It's fun to do a whole bunch of different kinds of things and see how they turn out. All the different colors and everything. That said, I should make more galaxy dice. I'll probably do that on some Monday when I'm not streaming. Do that by myself. Because I, I am going to, I am changing up my galaxy dice a little bit. So that they uh, they polish better, because could not I couldn't polish the my original galaxy dice all that good just because of how the glitter was on them. You know the glitter was on the outside, so if I put them in a polishing tumbler, the the holographicness wears off. 
I just end up with silver glitter, which isn't nearly as much fun as holographic glitter. So I'm trying to get it so that the glitter suspends, which does change the design a little bit. It makes it so that the, the glitter's a little bit more even throughout the die, which isn't quite as, as interesting visually, but um, it's gonna make it it's gonna make them nicer in a different way. So I should sit down and make some more of those. Um, I did a set as a test. Um, it needs more glitter though. So I might sit down and just make a bunch of galaxy dice at some point. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Uh, let me just scrape everything one more time. So I'll scrape everything off of here. And then we're gonna scrape everything off the sides. Scrape the sides and the bottom. And we're gonna make sure that there's no more streaks in this. I just want to make sure that there's no more streaks that I can see at all. I want this to be mixed completely. And I think, I think we're, I think we're good. Oh, nope, there's a little bit of a streak there. Just a second. There's some stuff to the side, it looks like. So let me, let's stir that just a little bit more. Make sure that we got it this time. I think you know, we're so close. We're very, very close to it being all stirred. Again, I'm a bad judge of time. I don't know how long it usually takes me to stir this all up. Think I'm paying attention to that? I'm not. I'm just stirring until it looks right. It's just uh it's one of those things, you know, so I don't really cook. Um, I'm very lucky. My, my brother enjoys cooking, and so he does all the cooking. Um, but I don't really cook. Um, but it's like one of those things where the person's just like, and then you add a pinch. And it's just like, how much is that? And they're like, the, it's just the, the amount that looks like the right amount. Like, you just get to that point where you're just like, yeah, I know what this is supposed to look like when it's at the, the correct consistency or the right amount or that sort of thing. You do it enough and you're just like, yeah, that's that's how that's supposed to look. Or that's how heavy that's supposed to be. Alright, let's see here. I think we might be good now. Let me just scrape this off. And double check that there's none stuck to there. I'd say we're good. All right. Like I was saying, we're going to start with our Jumbo D20. Um, and that's because I want there to be time for all of this resin to sink down to the bottom and air to rise to the surface. So I'm going to pour this in here all the way up to the top. And we're going to let that let it sit for a minute. Well, hopefully all the air rises to the surface. And when we, when we finally have got enough in there, we probably have gone down by about 25 milliliters. That's about how much a Jumbo D20 takes. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So a full set of, a full, like, eight-piece set of dice, nor normal size eight-piece set of dice, takes about 30 milliliters of resin. And a Jumbo D20 takes about 25. So it's almost the same amount of resin to make a Jumbo D20 as it is to make a full set of dice. Just a fun random fact there. Yeah, we've gone down about 15, it looks like. So this one's gonna, probably going to have quite a few quite a few air bubbles rising to the surface uh, for a while. So I'm going to set that off to the side over here. Well, hopefully air starts rising. All right. Next. Uh, let's do these florals next because again florals like to get air trapped in them so um let's see which side do i want dip just dip our uh, our yellow flower here put in the mold and we're going to back this with some moss let me 
grab my moss to put in here. I have a couple of different kinds of moss. I'm trying to make it kind of interesting, have a some variation. I feel like differences in texture and stuff just make things look more interesting. Um, I do kind of want to cover the bottom completely. It's, well, it's, it, for quite a bit at least. Um, so that it looks full. Oh, you know, I probably should add a little bit of moss along the sides, too. Um, I'm going to add just some little tiny bits of moss kind of along the sides so that it doesn't look like it's all shoved up into the very top. I want it to look like it's the whole keycap that is that is full of moss. I lost a piece of moss, which is not good. I don't want that piece of moss elsewhere. Okay, I think we got it. Um, so let's uh, So I'm going to grab yeah, just a little bit here and kind of break it up. I'm going to try and kind of shove that into the sides of the keycap. Hopefully, hopefully this works. Hopefully, oops, hopefully I don't end up with uh, just moss everywhere, which I, I mean, I kind of am ending up with just moss everywhere, but that's okay. All right. And I think that'll make it look fuller, okay. like um, more more overgrown. That's that's I think that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Um, more finished, I guess. It's not going to look separate. It's not going to look like two separate pieces. It'll hopefully look all like just one keycap with the moss is kind of filling the whole thing. Uh, come on. Alrighty. Uh, I'm gonna add. So this is this is a little bit. Of, I I broke, I broke my spray bottle. Um, this is just a little bit of rubbing alcohol, uh, and it helps break the surface tension and pop some bubbles. Um, so before I put the lid on here, I'm just trying to break the surface tension a little bit. Um, and I think we've got enough resin in there, so I'm just going to put the lid on. Uh, the other ones I won't press down because uh, I need a little bit of extra resin to fill in when I, these go into the pressure pot. Because these are going to go into a pressure pot and all of the air bubbles are going to get squished down really, really small. And so you need resin to fill in where those air bubbles were. But this has some sprues, and so it's going to pull the resin from there. So I can press that down all the way. Um, all right. Moving on, um, what should we do next? I think let's do the graveyard ones next because I want the resin to be kind of uh, there's another piece of of uh, moss there. I want the the resin to be pretty liquidy for this because I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of white, I think, um, and not even like a super opaque white or anything, but I'm gonna do like a little bit of fog. Um, and to do that, I'm going to add just a little bit of resin pigment here. I'm going to stir that up. Kind of stir stick here. So I'm going to stir this up. And it's just going to make kind of a foggy white. It's not, it's, it's white definitely. It's not as opaque as my, um, alcohol inks are. This one's just a resin pigment. Um, I've got just a little bit of white there. And I'm going to add just the barest amount to all of these little grave plots. And then the idea is that hopefully when I add a whole bunch of the clear from, a, from up high, it will displace that and kind of make it look a little smoky, a little misty. So I'm just going to add couple of drops into the B20. The B20 is big, so it's going to get a couple. Same with the B12. Do a couple drops and spread them out. Um, B10 is just going to get a drop. 
Yeah, everything else is just going to get a drop of white resin because I don't want it to overpower everything. And even, even the D2 is just going to get a drop. And then we're going to add clear. I'm going to add this, but hopefully it displaces that white a bit. Oops. Yep. Um, and ho I want this, I'm adding also this um, fairly er early on because like with, you know, the, the, fl the chunky D20 with all the stuff in it, there's lots of little inclusions in here, so there's lots of space for um, things to kind of get air trapped in them. Even though there's not as many, like, overhangs like the the plants you know i have kind of a moss kind of carpet in here um even the little gravestones air might get you know just stuck behind them and everything like that so i want to add this now so that there's time for time for that air to rise to the surface so there's so much resin that i just put on that d2 just a moment here Move some of this over to the over to the lid, and I might I might need to swirl some of that white manually. It looks like because it looks like the this white, at least in the D two, is kind of stuck. So. to spread out and look kind of smoky-ish. And I don't want it to just sit in one spot. So let's, uh, I'm just going to help that kind of disperse a bit. So it's not, that's not what I want. I don't want a dollop of white. I just want kind of like a fog effect. So we'll do that through all of these. So I'm just trying to trying to get it kind of figure out where all of that white is and get it stirred in. I'm getting distracted from uh, the fact that I'm actually streaming while I do it. Man, you know, so I like streaming over, like, making videos. So the reason that I ha don't really do YouTube videos, I post my VODs to YouTube, but the reason I don't do YouTube videos and I stream is because I can't, I can't edit. I just, I don't know, I just can't get myself to, like, edit things. I find it to be a pain in the butt, editing is, um... I don't know, I'm just not good at it, I guess, and so I haven't taken the time to actually get good at it. Um, but, uh, what was I talking about that? Oh, I was just going to say that, like, there are definitely different things, I feel like. Um, I feel like streaming's more personal. Um, and, like, that's, that's kind of what I like about streaming, is that, like, it's like, yeah, you can hang out with people. Kind of a way to hang out. Um, there's our hair in there, I think. Let's get that out of there. Plus, where are you going to get all the lovely cat hair in my resin content? Um, Alright, and I'll show you. Oh, there's a little tiny more, more drop of resin. Um, what was I saying? Um... What was I saying? Oh, just that I, um, yeah, I like streaming for the, the social aspect of it, but, um, uh, 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 like, there is still a certain amount of, like, effort that streaming takes, I guess. Like, it's fun. I really enjoy it, but, like, once I stream for, like, two hours, this hasn't been two hours yet, but I don't feel 100% today. So, you know, um, but once I've been streaming for like two hours, it's like, I'm tired because it's, it's, 
very like you have to be aware of your surroundings it's kind of like driving like to be fair it's, it's more fun than driving <laughs> at least for me i'm not a huge fan of driving uh, i don't care about it too much but it's not like something i do for fun but like you know you're you're doing a task and whatever and um it's it's not like a super taxing task like, it's not super difficult to drive somewhere, but, like, you have to be aware the whole time. So, like, the driving itself is not, you know, tiring, really. It's the fact that you have to be, like, aware of your surroundings for, for you know, two hours. So it gets, it is a little bit tiring. Um, where was I going with this? I don't know, that might have been where I was going with this. It was just that streaming, streaming can be... Streaming can be tiring too. Oh, I need a little bit more. That's an MSD ten. Um, I'm adding a little bit of that alcohol to hopefully get all the bubbles to pop on the surfaces here. All right. And so I think someone was asking about how much I fill my my molds. I overfill them just a little bit. And then, so, look kind of dumb them a little bit. And then I add a little bit to the lids as well. Um, that's going to need some more. Let me add these to the, uh, my tray over here. Normally I'd put this in the corner over here. Let's put this in the corner, out of my way. I think it'll be more out of my way if I set this over here. This is where I usually set it. There we go. So I'm just setting these on my tray that they're going to go into the, uh, the pressure pot. Um, I'm going to let them sit with the lids off for a little bit so that all the air can rise to the surface um, and have time to escape. So I'm going to set these over here. That's leaking resin everywhere. Alright, uh, let's see. We're going to add a little bit more to our D20 here because it's starting to get low again. Yeah, you can, you can see all of the... Uh, the air bubbles rise to the surface. All right, let's let's add our little bit here. I don't think we need very much. I think we only need like five, maybe. It doesn't. It's not going to take a lot of resin. Let's go up to five. All right, for that, and this one's going to take 25 of this. So this is going to be the base. And it's just clear with some um, iridescent flakes in it. So 25 of this and 5 of the orange for a total of 30. Where am I at? Yep, that seems about right. Cool. Uh, I'm trying to divvy it up now um, because if I leave it in here it gets a little bit warm and causes other problems. I don't actually know how much resin this is going to take. This will be another five. I think this is going to be my next thing. I'm going to leave some resin in my mixing cup um, because I think I'm going to need a little bit more in this D20. Also, there's a cat hair right there. I uh, So I have four cats, and yesterday and today was um, all of their vet visits for the year, getting all of their updated shots and everything, so... It does not surprise me that I have cat hair everywhere since they were stress shedding in the car on the way to the vet. I um so I went and set it up so that I had two like two cats at a time. Um so I did Knot and Luna together and then I did Fitz and Koshi together. Just cause like they seem to get along the best kind of in those pairs. Um this needs to be mixed up just a little bit more. And on the way to the vet yesterday, it was not in Luna, um, and they were so unhappy on the way to the vet. And my vet is um, doing it where, like, still where um, you park in the parking lot and they come out and get the animals. So you don't actually go into the vet just to, you know, try and keep everyone socially distanced and everything. Um, and so once we got there, I was still in the car and... Not and Luna were still very freaked out, so I, 
pulled knot out of her slightly smaller cat carrier and I put her in the cat carrier with Luna and they like instantly just like settled down they were so much chiller once they were in the same cat carrier um and so they just stayed in the same cat carrier the the rest of the time like they went into the vet in the same cat carrier and came out in the same cat carrier and went home in the same cat carrier and man you know I don't know if it was just a frequency. Do you have your exit buddy? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I was gonna say on the on the way there, um, I don't know if Luna just meows at a frequency that hurts my ears, or if she has like the lungs of a fighter jet. But that cat can scream loud. She was in she was in the cat carrier, buckled into the the passenger seat next to me. I thought I was gonna go deaf in one ear so loud on the way there and they were just both like super quiet and chill on the way home they were both in the same cat carrier just kind of snuggled up together being sad um so today when i was it was time to go to the vet for fitz and koshi i just put them in the same cat carrier from the start and they were both very you know scared and unhappy but they seemed a lot chiller than have in the past like i've had trouble with fitz in the past where he will he will try to escape the cat carrier and i'm worried he's gonna hurt himself like like he's like throwing himself against the bars kind of trying to escape the cat carrier and with him and koshi and the cat carrier together they both just kind of laid there and were sad <laughs> which was good i was i was worried that i'd have troubles with the, the cats but they were all really good they're all really good for the vet. Um, I found out that my apparently my veterinarian is a Critical Role fan because uh, yesterday uh, when we're doing kind of like the you know just the the rundown of what's going on with the cats so like the way they do it is you take the cat and, and then they call after they've done the checkup and everything and just been like, go over everything and just like hey, yep they're looking good here here's how, here's how much they weigh uh, any questions and concerns that sort of thing. Yeah, I need more green, I think. Um, and, uh, 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 what was I just saying? Oh, but yeah, um, she was like, uh, um, where did you come up with the name Not? I'm like, oh, it's a podcast character, and she's just like, is it Critical Role? And I'm just like, yes, yes, it's Critical Role, and she's like, oh, phew! I was taking, I was taking a, a, a chance there sounding like a complete nerd over the phone. <laughs> it's just like, don't worry, don't worry. If you're if you're a nerd, uh, my cat's named Not, so uh, I must also be a nerd. All right, I think that's kind of a really light green. I don't know if I want a little bit more, a little bit more green. A little bit of this green, maybe. That might be too much of that green. Whoops. Uh, get rid of some of that green. Yeah, just a little bit of that green. Yeah, it's looking a little bit more green, green, green. We'll do one more drop of the, the yellowish green here. Well, I guess that's two drops, but that's fine. So, just get, I'm just getting everything kind of where it needs to be. Um, let's see here. I think I like that color, so we'll go with that. Um, let's stir everything up. Let's see here. So this is the one with the leaf. So the leaf I want to have in clear. There is some sort of hair or something on that. Let's clear that off. Um, And there's, there's our leaf, and we're going to put that in here. Oops. And I want a little bit of clear over that. So we're going to have just a little... Oh, you haven't seen the cat hair dice. I think if I have them here. There you go. There's, there's the d20 full of cat hair. Um... 
Yes, it, it's it's a long-standing joke that um, all cat hair does. It's a long-standing joke that um, there's always complimentary cat hair in my dice. And so at one point, chat here uh, convinced me that I should make uh, cat hair dice. It's not a joke. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, but convince me that I should make cat hair dice. And then were, they were surprised when they found out that I actually had a bag of cat hair just sitting in the drawer next to me. You know, it's like, you know, if you're, if you're gonna say it, you can't be surprised when I actually go through with this. And just for reference, the, the bag, I have cat hair, and it's not gonna make it seem any better, I'm sure. Um, I saved it at one point because I was trying out needle felting. I was just like, I could probably needle felt cat hair. Why not? Um, yeah, so, yeah, I guess it doesn't really help anything, but, uh, that, is, that was the original reason for it. Hmm. Every once in a while I just get a little bit of that purple shimmer, but, like, not super often, which I guess maybe is kind of nice. It has like a faint, so this is, this is, um, I added way too much of the white, uh, resin, but. Let's add our, our white. Yeah, it has a little, kind of a faint purplish shimmer to it. So this, this is the white that I, um, I pulled out that interference violet, so it's white and then it shimmers purple. And then I added way too much of the um, um, uh, alcohol ink, so it ended up much more opaque and without being able to see the purple as much, but that's okay. Alright, that should be enough of that. And I'll add a little bit of... So of course, um, when I got my keycap molds figured out. I only have um, Cherry R4 keycap mold at the moment. Um, I just finished this thing to be able to make um, R1 keycaps, Cherry R1 keycaps. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do like space bars and stuff yet because the system that I have for making molds is really only built for um, this like single sort of sized keycaps. Um, well that's okay. So I'll start with these, that's fine. But I would like to do like space bars and stuff at some point. See how this turns out. That's go off to the side as well. Uh, and I think we're gonna have enough resin here. Let's see how this is doing. This is the Chunky D20. There is a flower up here at the top. I'm just gonna pull out. Uh, yeah, I think the um, I think the moth is floating a little bit. Let's push that down a bit. I'm going to, I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's enough resin in here. My fingers are crossed. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm worried that uh, there's a big pocket of air in there somewhere. But fingers crossed that there's not. Um, I'm not 100% sure. There's not really a good way to be 100% sure. I probably should have actually... Uh, glued down that moth like I said I should. But that's okay. Okay, we're gonna let that sit a little bit longer. Let's see if any more air bubbles rise to the surface, but it's looking pretty good. Alright, let's do our, our gold and gold foil and rose petal keycap. Should we do that one yet next? Oh actually you know before we do that this is for a commission. I need to get this done. This is um, for a keychain. It doesn't take very much, but I need that. And I need this. I need to mix that up. I just really uh, no, that has that was in it. So this is. I just need some white. Some white for this. The other half is like black. Um, this is kind of a half and half sort of set of dice. It's half white and then half uh, black with purple glitter. So I 
just want to want to get this keycap not keycap this um keychain done so that i can get this commission done because otherwise i have all the pieces built for this commission but i kept putting off pouring resin I kept getting distracted by other things so i was going to pour resin on saturday um and then got distracted with minecraft and we streamed that instead and then I was going to pour resin on Monday, and then I actually finished the um, uh, the graveyard dice fairly late. It wasn't super late, but it was late enough that I'm just like, I don't really want to pour resin now. <laughs> we'll just do it on Wednesday. So now we're just doing it on Wednesday. But I want to get that that all done. So that's gonna go off to the side here. Cool, that's done. Um, got some left over resin. Let's do this next, I think. I think we're gonna have enough resin for everything. I think we're gonna have just enough resin for everything. So this is gonna be the black uh, base for the keycap. So this one's going to be that multi-chrome one that we, um, that we dusted in earlier on. So let's... Uh, Let's make some just black resin as a base here. And this is a nice opaque black resin uh, pigment. It really is a nice pigment. It doesn't take very much. It just takes a little bit of pigment there. It's always so satisfying. You just have that little thing and then you stir it up and you end up with this giant pool of inky darkness. I do want to make sure that I have some. Um, I, just, I was just adding a little bit of clear to the, the lid of the chunky D20 before I forget. I think that should be enough resin. It really, it's kind of interesting. I feel like a lot of resin things, they take so much less resin than you think. Like, it seems like they're going to take a whole bunch and then they take so little. Um, dice are almost kind of. I don't know, I don't know if they're opposite, but it's just, I don't know, things always end up taking, like, not the amount of resin that I expect them to, I guess. That's part of the reason that I'll, I'll measure uh, the volume of things before I do them, is because I really can't eyeball it all that well. Like this one, there's plenty of resin in there. All right. See it all rise up to the surface there. All right, and then so we have a little bit left for our last keycap. Before we do that, let's do these. I think let's do our our um, these sets. I really should have done this one earlier because um, I want all this stuff to sink to the bottom, and I don't want it to be so thick that it doesn't have time. But it's not these the set is not as important to me as some of the other sets so it's it's gonna go after i do these um but these these are the lantern ones and to do these i'm going to just put a little bit of our resin here which is clear with just a little bit of a gold shimmer to it um into each one of these molds Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit thicker, which is not great for this, because I don't want all those air bubbles to get trapped. Because they could definitely get trapped underneath all this. And I kind of want to make sure that all of our, like, sixes and our zeros and our nines and stuff are, have, are kind of filled in a little bit in those holes because I have ended up with kind of like gaps in those in the past. I don't really want that. So I'm just going to kind of smear this along the side and try to make sure it gets into all of those nooks and crannies. We're just going to see if that helps. 
Let's see if that helps at all with that issue. And then I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna squish it in there. And I'm hoping I'm gonna hope that my uh, my acrylic paint holds up while I squish. I think we're good. Yeah, definitely need some more resin. I think we're gonna end up adding a little bit of clear resin, which is fine. We can add a little bit of clear. It doesn't need doesn't need it on the top. That's fine. All right, and we're gonna let that sit for a minute, and hopefully let air bubbles rise to the surface. Like I said, I should have done these earlier. I wasn't thinking about it, but that's that's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I want to make sure there's no big air bubble gaps. No big spots for air bubble air bubbles to get trapped. So I think I'm gonna do that, and then I'm just gonna add clear on top because might as well. It's not a huge um, thing, anyways. It's just a little bit of gold shimmer. I don't think it's gonna be noticeable, to be honest. Or if it is, it's gonna be barely noticeable. All right. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit thicker. So we put, might not get to the last keycap, which is fine. I'll just do that one a little bit later. It's okay. The 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 gold and roses one can 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 happen another day. All right. Try and get these to. Uh, I'll even out. All right. All right, all right, all right. Starting to move a little bit. I'm start, starting to move a little bit faster here and a little bit more frenetically, I guess. Um, I want to make sure that these all get done. Um, like, I am working under a little bit of a time limit here because I do need to get all this stuff done uh, before the resin cures completely. Um, I want to get these into the pressure pot and, and ready to go. So let's. Uh, let's get all of our things in there. Come on, alright. Trying to make sure that they all end up the, up, up the right direction, too. And without random bits of moss in there. Why is there a random bit of moss trying to sneak in there? That seems strange. I don't know why there'd be a random bit of moss in there. those try try and get those to uh, have enough why does this have this one has so many bubbles in it and get those pop all right that's better Ooh, nope 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 Ugh, just a second See, this is the problem. Every once in a while, it will end up in there. It'll flip the wrong direction, and I have to make a mess. And that's what we're doing. This is going to make a mess. All right. There we go. We've got the correct one up. And now I'm covered in sticky resin. Let's uh, put hands down. All Let's get the last little bit of our our shimmery uh, stuff in there. Also, there's a hair on my thumb, and it's not even a cat hair; it's a me hair. Oh, my hair! What's that doing there? I think it's probably the same one that's just been floating around, because there's just like 
it'll be like one of my hairs, and I'll just like try to wipe it off on the uh, the the rag over here. And probably what I'm doing is I'm just I keep uh, picking up the same one over and over again and wiping it off on the same rag. But it's, yeah, it's, it's probably what's happening. All right. See how this goes. Let me. What am I just using? Yeah, so let's fill in some of those eights and sixes and stuff. All right. And we'll do our D20. And again, I want to try and. Oh, no. It did it again. See? It did it again. Wrong side up. It's hard to get those in there, especially right side up. So much easier once they're, um, no, stop that. I was going to say, so much easier once they're all sticky because they're, yeah, see, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot more fiery once it's shiny because it definitely, it almost looks brighter now that it's coated in, in sticky resin. Is I gonna do it again? I think I'm just not holding it the correct direction it needs to go. Man, it needs to go in this way. There we go, got it in. Woo! With the top on the top. And we're gonna add clear resin. And give that a second to hopefully get down in there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to the um, the last key cap, but while these are sitting here, um, bubbling up, let's do, there is still a hair texture. Let us do this last set of... Um, of dice. And this is the one that's going to have that iridescent fo foil and our um, little bit of, of, of orange and yellow and all those fun bright colors. So this is going to have iridescent flakes. And our iridescent fl I just really like iridescent flakes. They're so pretty. I always think I should add some foil. Mmm, nah, it's okay. Yeah, this is starting to get a little bit warm. There's uh, so much in this little cup here that it's uh, starting to get warm, which means it's going to start setting up soon. So let's get this divvied up before it uh, gets too warm and actually gets solid. Because that's not what I want. I want it to be cool enough that things, uh, that it doesn't set up super quick so that things have time to sink down in there. Get that into the D20 and the D12. And I add way too much to the D4. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to take a little bit off of the D4 there. Move it over to the D20 or the D12, I think. I glooped way too much. I over -glooped. That's what I did. I over -glooped. So, I, I want a little bit of space um, so that... There's room for this orange. But before I do the orange, I'm going to add a drop of yellow to each of these. And a drop of orange to each of these. I might need more orange and yellow. We'll see in the E20. Oh, if I get the orange open. Oh boy, just a second. Okay, we got it, we got it. That orange did, it was stuck shut. And a drop of orange. Try and do it kind of opposite. Um, and then we're going to add a drop of white on top of that. And this is why I should have done this earlier. It's because I was going to try and go for a Petri effect, but I think it's a little bit late now. Um, the ink's not going to want to try and fall. 
the ink's going to try and stay towards the surface, which is But that's okay. Um, I, hopefully some of that will get dragged down with the, uh, with the orange um, uh, mica. I'm going to add a little bit more here. I'm going to add the last little bit of this on top of a couple of these that are a little bit lower than I was thinking they were. Use just a little bit more. And then we'll add all of our orange. Let's do let's do our our orange shimmery uh, stuff on top. Hopefully this stuff will sink down in, even though we're a little bit late. Kind of mix with all of those ink colors that I just added in there. Do something interesting. You know, even if it, it does do something different than I'm expecting, because I did it a little bit later than I have in the past. Hopefully it'll still do something interesting. You know. That's kind of the fun thing about resin and making dice and everything is that like usually even if something doesn't turn out exactly how I thought it would, it still turns out interesting. Like it still is something cool. Um, so that's all I can really hope for here. And I'm liking the, I'm liking the colors. I think I think I like these this orange and this yellow and all of that together. So you know even if it all stays on one side, it'll probably still look cool with all those iridescent flakes and everything. So who cares? It'll be fine. Alright, and then let's add this to the ink tube. Trying to, trying to add enough to the D2 here. Alright, and then we're going to add just a little bit to each lid. Um, so I don't want air bubbles to get trapped between the lid and the base part of the, uh, of the um, um, mold. So, let's add a little bit to the numbers here on top. And again, I want a little bit of extra resin anyways, um, just so that when these go into the pressure pot, there's some extra resin to fill up the spot where all the air bubbles were. Oh, my phone just buzzed. I always forget to uh, put my phone on silent before uh, streaming. I'm a professional. And I'm going to put a little bit on the D2 here, even, even though it's... Uh, there we go. Even though it, it's, it doesn't have a number there, it, it's fine. Could still use a little extra just in case. All right, got those. And there's a few air bubbles on some of these. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, even though there's some uh, ink on most of these. Okay, and these are definitely starting to set up, so I do like the, like, they're very fiery. I like how fiery they are. Alright, so let me scoop these up a minute. Um, the last couple of things that we're going to need to do is um, the eyeballs here. We'll do these eyes, and then we're going to add the last little bit to the top of this, which could use just a little bit more clear, it looks like. But let's do, let's do our eyes and see how these turn out. So we've got our, our green here. I'm going to do... Let's make sure that these are clean and not full of cat hair and random debris. Random debris. No, that's not right. Okay. I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to do... A big eye here of this lighter green. Fill it up most of the way. I'm going to do a smaller eye here of this lighter green. And then I'm going to actually add some more green to this. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Um, and the reason for that is that, so I mean, the reason I have two different sizes here is that actually they want two different sized eyes. Um, and I'm kind of I want to do a couple of different colors and stuff just to see what they like better. So let's do, whoa, what was that? Oh, 
No paradox. Thanks for raiding. We're just finishing up uh, some resin stuff here. I'm making some some uh, doll eyes, or well, in this case, it's going to be some plushy eyes. Well, hopefully. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet of you. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Do uh, do something fun, uh, streaming. I'm uh, just finishing up here. I'm getting to that point where it's getting a little bit, a little bit sticky. Okay, so that's a slightly darker green. We're gonna try a couple of different greens. Oh, thanks, thanks, Elstragoon. I'm uh, I'm slowly trying some different things. Like, I've found that they're really fun to make. But I'm still figuring out what designs I want to do. You know, still figuring out what designs I want to do. Doing good. Played a new Vampire Battle Royale. Ooh, that's cool. What's it called? I don't play a ton of video games myself, but like, I end up finding out about a lot of uh, video games because my brother plays a lot of video games. It's one of those things where it's like, I, I enjoy watching other people play video games, but I don't usually play a lot of them myself, because usually I have them on in the background while I'm doing something else. But, vampire, oh, Vampire Mastery Blood Hunt. Ooh, that sounds cool. Uh, that sounds cool. It's pretty hype. Is it, is it a, a newer game, or is it just one that you found... Seems like a whole keyboard of those keycaps would be a lot of money, though. Yeah, I'm still figuring out pricing, too. So we'll see if my prices stay there. I was trying to figure out, um, like, what a normal price is. But we'll see, we'll see where my prices end up for the keycaps, because, quite honestly, they're a lot easier than dice. So, I, I don't know. Oh, it's in early access currently. Just released a couple of... Oh! Vampire the Masquerade. Yes. Yes, Vampire the Masquerade is a... Yes. I've made a couple of sets of, of D10s before, and I assume always assume they're for that. Because I know that those use, like, sets of D10s. Right, I'm trying to... Yeah, so I might have to cut that down or sand it or something. So I'm trying to, um, the reason I have this wire here is to hopefully try and keep these upright, but I think it's just going to get caught in the resin. So let me just, I'm wondering if I can get these to stay upright without, ugh, without having anything there to support them. So I'm worried they're going to fall over, but I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll, we'll see if they fall over. If they do, I can always make more. I'll just make more. All right. So definitely something to uh, to keep an eye out for uh, when it actually fully releases. Cool, get cool game. Are you gonna lurk? All right, thanks. You yeah, have a good rest of your night. Thanks for stopping by. And telling me about telling me about your game. You gotta run. Alright, have a good night, El uh, Dragoon. Glad you guys could stop by. I'm just finishing up, to be fair, so. Just trying to get things put together, and then we're gonna put all of our lids on and, and be done for the night, but. Yeah, so that was what I was afraid of, was it falling over. Uh, yeah. So let's, uh, we'll see. We'll see if any of these, uh, turn out. I might need to find a better way to get these to go flat. Because they're definitely not flat at the moment. I think I probably shouldn't have added quite as much resin as I did. I added maybe a little bit too much resin, and now they're, uh, we're flowing a bit. Yeah, let's, uh, let me try getting this side to have just as much resin on it, and maybe we'll be good. Alright. Let those, I'm gonna let these sit for a minute while I, uh, 
Let these sit for a minute while I uh, put lids on things. And then we'll make sure those are hopefully nice and even. All right, so last little bit of resin I'm going to put on top of these because these are used just a little bit more, it looks like. We have all sorts of air bubbles coming up because they um, just, um, 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 there's, they're big inserts, so there's lots of space that air got trapped. And it's working its way up. So I'm going to add a little bit more to these. But we're definitely getting towards the end of our work time. Um, I can feel that the resin's getting a little sticky. It's it's thicker. Um, it's a thicker consistency. This one would actually be okay. Um, which means that it's uh, getting a little bit, it's starting to set a little bit. Um, so I want to get these into the pressure pot before it really starts setting. Because um, I don't want any air bubbles, you know, trapped. And here goes the top. Let these sit the last, uh, we'll probably put the lids on those last. Um, I'm going to add the last little bit of a clear to this D20 that has the moth in it, the moth and the flowers. I'm going to let that sit a minute as well, let those bubbles pop. And let's start putting some lids on things. So, um, here's our little graveyard dice. They've got some little bubbles on top. Let's see if we can get those popped. And we're going to start putting the lids on. And that, that has our little gravestone, a little bit of kind of fog in there that we added. And we're going to start putting these lids on. And I don't want to press them down. Um, I want there to be that little extra resin in there. I do want to make sure that they're lined up properly, though, so that they will fall down on their own uh, during the curing process. And this is just a little bit of alcohol. I don't remember. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not when I was doing this, um, just to break the surface tension here, get rid of those bubbles. Um, does a pretty good job. I broke my, I broke my spray bottle, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a new one. Gonna get a new one. But for the meantime, I'm just I've, I'm just dabbing some on, just dabbing some on to get rid of those. Uh, right. I am I am excited for these. You know, this is one of those ones I always get kind of nervous when I'm doing um, kind of detailed ones like this, the ones that have like a little scene in them, and part of it's just because getting the details right can be difficult it feels like um getting like the colors to actually you know i don't i, I was kind of worried that they were going to be kind of boring um i didn't have the purple flowers in there originally um around the, the gravestones ah i just stuck my finger in the uh the 20 of it um and it's just like hmm, i don't want it to be boring but i don't want to add so much that it gets too like confusing to look at i guess um because i am that person that will just add a whole bunch of stuff if i can like i will add all of the things uh just because i think it's cool just stacking some things over here so i can have enough room for everything pop. there we go and that's fine. But I'm 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 actually have high hopes for these uh these uh graveyard dice. I'm I'm excited to see how they turn out. I'm, I'm really hopeful. Really hopeful that they turn out good. But I guess we'll see. This one I'm definitely gonna need to put something over the top of it, I think, because it sure looks like um Oh, uh, oh, it helps if I have the right thing. No wonder that lid didn't fit. It wasn't the right lid. That's the one to the other D10. That's not going to work. Alright. This one is definitely going to go under something else, because I think there's enough stuff in here that's going to kind of try and get in the way of the lid. And I need something to help hold that the lid down. So we'll, we'll put this D10 probably on top of it. That's 
And this could use a little bit of clear, I think. All right. We'll put this. We'll put this one on top of that bead too. All right. So moving on. Looks like these orange ones are mostly bubble free. There's still some bubbles here on the surface. I might actually need to go in and pop some of these manually. Um, they're getting a little bit out oh, far. Yeah, okay, cool. That one popped on its own. And I think we'll be, I think we're good to go. Let's start putting some of these together. I'm kind of excited for these. You know, these were ones where I'm just like, man, I just kind of want some more orange dice. So let's, let's just do some orange and some yellow because I feel like I don't have a lot of orange and yellow. But actually, I'm kind of excited for these colors. Like, they're very... They're very fiery, which I like. They're very fiery. Let's add, add a little bit of this to each, just to help pop those surface bubbles, just in case, because it does help. It does help. All right. Like I said, I'm just kind of making sure that the, the, the keys line up, but I don't want to press them down too hard. get rid of any little superfluous stuff. Alright, get that lid on there. Okay. Yeah, these are definitely starting to set up a little bit. I think probably as we get into the cooler season, uh, my resin will stay liquid for longer. So, if you warm up the resin, it will be a little bit more liquidy at first. Um, that's a, something that people will do to try and prevent bubbles, is they will, they will warm up their resin before they pour it, so that it's more liquidy. But then also if you warm up the resin, it makes it so that it sets faster. So I work really slow, so I want mine to set slowly, so that I have a lot of time to work. I want all of my work time. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the designs that I do, I like my resin to be a little bit thicker. Not all of them, but like I enjoy doing dirty pours, which is where you put all of the colors into one cup and then pour that uh, into into the uh, the mold. Um, and that seems to work really well when you have kind of a thicker resin. It seems to hold the colors separate, sort of pretty well. Um, and so. You know, I, I think once we get into the cooler seasons, and this room that I'm in uh, doesn't actually have a vent in it at all. It's near where the uh, central heating is in my house, and it kind of has a, a, it has ducting that runs through this room. And there's like, you know, some little holes in the ducting, but there's not really an, actually a vent in this room. Um, so once it starts getting cooler outside, um, it, it will start to get a little bit cooler in this room. Um, and so I expect my resin will get a little bit thicker, but it'll also get a little bit of its work time back. So we have we have that to look forward to, I, I think, um, as we start getting to, into some cooler months. Um, all right. Let's start getting our lids on. Anything else? Okay, I think we can start putting our lids on these. It looks like there's still some, some little air bubbles, but things are starting to uh, be good to go. Well, that one maybe not. Let's just make sure here. Alright, let's... Uh, fill in the... the zeros here because uh, air likes to get trapped in them. There's still a little bit of air trapped in them, but that's at least less. All right, let's get our lid on there. Make sure that's on all the way. All right, um, and then let's start getting these going. So let me pull my 
I'll put my chunky D20 out for a second while we start uh, stacking these. Oh, actually, I do want enough space for this. So let me add a little bit of that alcohol so that we can make sure that everything is, um, all the bubbles are popped on the surface there. I'm just going to kind of squish that up a little bit. I think we might end up with some air, but we end up with some air bubbles on the surface of this because I can see some air bubbles in there. Like, yeah, we might end up with some air bubbles either on the inside. Uh, let's not pull that out. That's not what I want. But I will pull this out because I don't really need that flower just floating in there. Alright. I'm really hopeful. So this has a whole bunch of flowers in it and then a moth on top. And I'm really hopeful that it turns out good. It's like, fingers crossed. Really, I really hope that it turns out good because that moth is just such a nice little moth. I mean, it's it's dead, but it's a very nice little moth. Like, it looks really nice. So I'm hoping that it uh, stays looking really nice. Stays looking really nice in there. Alright, let's get all, of our, get all of our lids on here. Oh, there's still an air bubble there. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of hopeful for these uh, lanterns now. So, um, they looked kind of muted. Um, if, I, if you saw them at the beginning of the stream, they looked kind of muted. Um, I was kind of worried that they weren't going to look very fiery, but the ones that I got coated in resin and then had to take them out of the molds and put them back in, like, they looked so much brighter. They look so much brighter, so I'm I'm hoping that once I uh, once these are have that shiny exterior, they will be a lot brighter, a lot brighter looking. Okay, so let me put this one. I definitely want something above it. My D fours are always I don't know those lids. I want to say that I need to make the um. I need to make, I think I need to sand down my blank inserts a little bit. I think they're going to be a little bit big. I think that might be my problem. But. Just make sure there's no big air bubbles in here. There's still an air bubble here. Oh, okay. Alright, we're getting to the end here. We're getting to the end here. Start getting all these lids on. I am hopeful. I am so hopeful that these turn out. Fingers are crossed. Well, metaphorically, I'm, I'm working at the moment, so I can't cross my fingers. But you guys, you, you cross your fingers for me. Um, that these turn out. And I'll, I'll send photos tomorrow. If they turn out. That's how things usually end up, is I send you guys photos of the ones that turn out. If there's ones that I'm just like, mm, or they just, you know, they, they, I ended up with big air gaps or something, I don't usually send photos unless someone asks to see a certain set, like, specifically. And that is a corner that's flown in. Alright, good. But... Man, I'm, I'm excited. I want these lantern ones to turn out. These were originally going to be for um, Halloween, but I think I have all of my sets figured out for October. Um, I think those might actually end up being some December ones. I might, I might have those in December. Like, and I'm trying to, trying to even things out a little bit. I usually try to have it so that there's like not a whole bunch of the same color in the same month and everything, and I had a lot of orange ones for October already. Well, with the, like, jack-o'-lantern dice and that sort of thing already going on. Plus I had the jack-o'-lantern dice, which were also hand-painted. Um, so I'm, I think they might, these might end up in December if they turn out. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Alright. Alright. 
has the B8. Is, it, is that corner filled in yet? No, it's not. There's one corner here, but there's just no, no resin in it yet. Alright. Well, while that corner hopefully fills in, while that corner fills in, let's get these figured out. So my, my big concern with these was that they were going to do this, where they fall over and they're no longer sitting upright. Um, and so originally I had this wire here, and I'm wondering if I need to bring that wire back and actually use it. But I, the problem is I think I'm going to end up with that wire in, in these then. Um, I was originally thinking like clothes pins or something, but... I wonder if I can put this up like a little bit higher and kind of like bounce it almost. Kind of like. Kind of like that. Actually, that might. Kind of work. Let me get this at the right angle. Yeah, I don't know that that's helping at all. I don't think that's helping at all. So let's just get rid of that. You know, even if these don't, even if these end up at like a weird angle, I can still use these as a proof of concept, and then we'll figure out how to make those sit better later. I think, I think the main thing at the moment is I need to. Make sure that it's not just like blank on one side, because then it's going to try and lean. If I have the whole thing coated, I think we're going to be better off. So, let's, we'll call that good for those. And then let's take a look at these. These ones are definitely trying to fall over. I think these ones don't have as much like of their own space. They're kind of... Um, they're running into, like, there's a bump on the inside, and they're kind of running into that. Um, but I think maybe the resin is thick enough that I can kind of put them where I want them and they'll maybe kind of stay. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll, we're going to see. We're going to see how that goes. Those might fall over completely. But if they do, oh well, that's okay. Um, alright. I have a little bit of extra resin here, and so let's, um, let's add a little bit of it to our Frankenstein dice that, I'm work that we're working on. So these dice here are a bunch of little layers of random resin at different angles. Um, so I'm just gonna, just gonna do that, and I have a full set of dice that I'm just slowly adding little bits of resin to until we'll get all the way to the top. This one's going to have some of this. Actually, let's add a whole bunch of this white. I think this will look nice in here. I want a whole layer of this white. I think, I think that might be good. Oh, that's a bit there. So let's see here. You know, we might be able to finish this one off. Let's finish this one off with this green. That'll be nice. It'll be nice to have another one finished off. I have the D2 finished off already. But it'll be nice to have the D4 finished off as well. So let's get that filled with green. And we will a little bit on the lid. That one will be ready to go. Excellent. And this one I think I wanted a little bit of an angle maybe. We'll use the rest of the green in this one I think. Or maybe, you know, 
just go this way. So I have kind of a white that's already at this angle, but it might be cool to do another one at the same angle. So I don't know if I've done that yet, where I've done like two layers that are kind of at the same angle, but they're all also kind of skewed. Let's try that. I'm going to do that. So we're going to do the last little bit of green here. This has been working well as kind of a way to get rid of extra resin, but also uh, work on a set of dice at the same time. Um, I could, I suppose, do some... Um, let's do a little bit of... We'll do the last little bit of white in here, I guess. These two have white kind of at the top already, so... Oh wait, what do I got over here? Oh, you know, I have. Well, Alright, yeah, we'll do the last little bit of white in here. The, the, this one that I just grabbed is a, a bonus V4 and has pink and green in it. Um, but there's just uh, a little, like, missing area of resin. So I'm gonna, just going to try and fill it in with a little bit of clear. I'm going to see if I can get that to be fixed. But it's a very small little area, so let's see. Alright. So let's put that. Just stacking everything. Alright. And I think I've got pretty much everything figured out. Um so I think I think this is pretty much it for tonight. Wait, I have got a little bit a little bit clear left. I'll put this last little bit of clear into this uh, bonus die here. So we'll finish this one off. I think we got enough on that D8, yeah. Mm, it may not be quite enough. I don't know, I think it'll be just enough, actually. Alright. So yeah, I'm gonna, let's get these last couple lids on, but um, past that, I think we're probably done for the night. Um, so thank you guys for stopping by. Get the last couple of lids on. Um, I do stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Saturday at noon Pacific Standard Time. So if you ever want to hang out, you know, that's when you can find me. I do have a Discord if you ever want to come chat arts and crafts, you know, dice or D&D or show off, you know, cute photos of your pets. Um, that's pretty much what the Discord gets used for. Um, that is in my About section down below. Um, so feel free to come hang out. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to get these last two lids on. And I think I'm ready to call it a night if I can stack everything. So yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out. It was good to see you, Bonnie. Glad you could come uh, come hang out for a bit and see the see the process. I will uh, hopefully see you guys a little bit later. Hey, all right. Yep. Bye.